tell people to stop in front of me. Hi, this is uh, Clark Sullivan, Freeman Sullivan, your live streamer. Glad you could join us. Uh, we're here by the San Francisco Maine Public Library on Larkin Street. Uh, it's Extinction Rebellion. We've got a crowd of about 50, 75 people here. I try to get a little closer, but you can't really hear what they're saying anyway. But uh, we're going to have a die in here in a little bit. Everybody is going to split off in all these little affinity groups. And uh, we should have a good photo up for two of you. The people who are watching. following me too with that music. going on except for uh, uh, one lady she's talking to everybody and you can barely hear it uh, or else I'd be up there trying to chase it down for you uh, basically what's going to happen here is that this is going to split up and there's going to be die-ins all over this area of different groups uh, different affinity groups so if you want to stick around check it out I'm happy to have you this protest is on behalf of Mother Earth, dedicated to the preservation of life here on planet Earth. It's not just all about 
the climate changing, but we're also talking about how, like, there's so many species that have become extinct, or becoming extinct, we can make it. We can make that uh, it's become a real uh, crisis, uh, uh, emergency. I mean, a species disappears and becomes extinct every 90 seconds or less. So, and it just happens, you know, and it's not nothing you could do to stop. It's systemic and not personal. You know, you can do what you can do. You can quit driving, you know, all this other stuff. Conservation helps, but it's not going to stop and okay. get rid of the system that engendered all this bullshit in the first place. And that's capitalism. So, hey, Leslie, you can agree to disagree, but uh, I'm just calling it the way I see it. If you want to disagree, just go ahead and enter in on the chat, and I'll be happy to debate. Or you could join us. We're down here by the main San Francisco Public Library here at Larkin Street. Hi. And Grove. I'll live stream here for the next 15 minutes or so. We're going to be doing a die in. Uh, it's warming up nicely. When I started out, it was today, it was kind of chilly out, but the sun's coming out. And it's a beautiful fall day. So come down and join us if you're in San Francisco or at Larkin and Grove. Accessible by BART, by the Civic Center Station. I can live streaming. Thank you. No, you're welcome. I'm oh, sure. Farmer's market. Yeah, I'm good for one. I'm good for a farmer's market. Have a nuisance. Everybody lining up here. Get up for a little march. a unique way of doing this once we get started is that I can go forward and shoot it over my shoulder like so so I'm not watching the lens
All right, we're getting ready to get started here, it looks like. On a solemn protest march here. Yeah, please share this uh, with the hashtag Extinction Rebellion. So get the message out there. Let the world know how we feel about the extinction of all life on Earth. This is from our generation. It looks like it's today. Yeah. 
Down here to hide. I'm Bolton. We're gonna proceed through the farmers market. I do believe. Oh, this ought to be really good. Mr. Valley. Lots of uh, middle school students. That's how the light gets in. That's how the light gets in. Forget your perfect offering. Forget your perfect offering. Just ring the bell. Just ring the bell. I still can ring. I'm live streaming. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, share uh, with the hashtag Extinction Rebellion. How do you care about life here on planet Earth? That we have all these wonderful fruits and vegetables to eat? Because you know the honeybee is dying off. And uh, how are we going to fertilize all this great produce if we don't have the honeybee? So this extinction thing affects us at every level of life from microscopic to macroscopic, even out 
to the furthest reaches of our atmosphere. So, so it's a very serious thing indeed. It's not something to be laughed off like the the most exalted wisdom, Donald Trump's, you know, laps this crap off as being uh, ludicrous, but uh, we're here to tell you different. So we're making our way through farmer's market. Okay. Well, we're trailing up Newsom here. And you know, for much of a liberal as he is, Newsom, will, I think he would sell us out to the oil companies in a heartbeat. I know Jerry Brown did. Okay, we're working our way into the middle of UN Plaza. Let me try to get around here. what the response we wanted. You just can't. There is a crack in everything. That's how. 
There's only Ted Makita left. Good lord. The manatee is doing pretty badly, too. As a matter of fact, I mean, there's not a species on Earth who's not based with extinction. And uh, if you don't think we're faced with it, think again. It's one reason why they call this the Anthropocene Epic. Anthropocene means man created disaster. Directed by the, the men in the hazmat suits. Hey, could you let your pack? It's directed by the men in the hazmat suits. to draw public attention to the extinction, the mass extinction of life here on Earth, that if we don't really to learn, learn how to live in harmony with the plants and the animals here on Earth, there's not going to be any life left. Species are becoming extinct every 90 seconds, 
Like, think about that. Every minute and a half, there's another species of light that disappears off the face of the earth. So, it's terrible. And we're doing the best that we can. The first thing we can do is stop drilling for fossil fuel. Leave that oil in the ground. Leave that plastic in the ground. We don't need it. Right? Yeah. Uh, Chris, yeah, I bet. Thanks, William. You know, I don't know. But the suit is made out of some weird material, some weird plastic. I'm sure that it doesn't degrade well. And, but you can bet it's pure poison. And they don't last very long either, so, you know, they rip, especially in around the crotch area. Crotch area. <laughs> anyway, we're having a moment of a die in here. Outlining everybody in chalk. We're Extinction Rebellion, and we're here to preserve life here on this planet, stop the climate change, or at least ameliorate it to a certain degree. It's going to affect your life, whether you realize it or not, or whether you believe in it or not, it already has started. Uh, it's little things like your food prices going up because there's no more honeybees, or your gas prices are going up. Because they're fracking everything and they're destroying the water table or they're pumping their oil in over Keystone XL and poisoning that aquifer the largest aquifer in the United States this just because the list goes on and on and on and on of the environmental destruction that occurs every day we lose the equivalent of three soccer fields of land down in the the rainforest, for instance, so.
Well, I would imagine those kids that walked by us earlier today from Valley Vista Middle School, I'm sure they didn't have the, the tiniest bit of clue that what was going on, what we were doing here. Because I could see, I looked at the young people and it just like failed to register on their face, like the dire circumstances of what their generation is going to face in the future. Uh, because we know that the Arctic, the Arctic is melted as basically for all intents and purposes for three months out of the year now. Antarctica is melting and once the methane starts to melt, then we're really going to be in some deep shit. Uh, because that stuff is capable of catching fire too. So methane is a gas. And we're lucky that it's frozen. Most of it is frozen underneath the Antarctic uh, ice cap. But that's melting. So, you know, we, we can only begin to tell you the amount of it. You know, I'm not, I think I'm trying to scare you. I am. You know, it's time to fucking wake up, people. You know, like, you don't realize, but it's happening faster than you think. The atmosphere is heated up, it heats up three degrees in the last five years. So, how about the fires? You know, is that what's that going to take? We're going to take, we're going to need another forest fire to convince you of climate change, right? What, what does it mean when all the life on the earth is has been, is dead, is, and you're the last person left. Yeah, is it, when are you going to finally believe it? Hey, Corey, how you doing? Glad you're watching. We're out here in the Civic Center of San Francisco. Uh, protest sponsored by Extinction Rebellion. We are Extinction Rebellion. Uh, and we're fighting climate change. And the best way we know how to. And uh, we're trying to get out there in the public eye. Check it out. Yeah, this is in San Francisco, William. So thanks for your time, everybody. Uh, what can you do personally? I say uh, organize an Extinction Rebellion chapter in your area and uh, start telling the oil companies to leave the oil in the ground. <laughs>
They keep the oil in the drum. People don't rise at the water. Knock all this presence down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter. They keep the oil in the ground. People gonna rise like the water. We're gonna kill this crisis now. I hear the birth of my great granddaughter. Say, keep the oil in the ground. People gonna rise like the water. We're gonna kill this crisis now. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, Keep the oil in the ground. People gonna rise like the ground. I'm gonna turn this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, Keep the oil in the ground. People gonna rise like the water. We're gonna turn this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter say, Keep the oil in the ground. People gonna rise like the water. We're gonna fill this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter say, Keep the oil in the ground. People gonna rise like the water. We're gonna fill this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter. Say, keep the oil on my ground. I'm not going to write it. People are going to ride like the water. We're going to turn the traffic down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter. Say, keep the oil on my ground. People are going to ride like the water. I hear the voice from the great grandmother. I gotta go. It's like back to the same. I hear the voice from the great grandmother. I hear the voice from the great I hear the voice from the great grandmother. 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 Keep it on the ground like the water. I hear the voice from the great grandmother. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, Keep the oil on the ground. People gonna rise like the water. We're gonna clean this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, Keep the oil on the ground. That's right. People gonna rise like the water. We're gonna clean this crisis down. I hear the voice of the great granddaughter saying, Keep the oil on the ground. Keep the oil on the ground. I hear the voice of the great granddaughter saying, Keep the oil on the ground. Keep the oil on the ground. Keep the oil on the ground. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter say, Keep the oil in the ground. People gonna ride like the water. We're gonna cool this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter say, Keep the oil in the ground. People gonna ride like the water. We're gonna cool this crisis down. I hear the voice of the great granddaughter saying, Keep the oil on the ground. They have a wonderful barbecue. Keep the oil on the ground. Just think of all these fruits and vegetables that weren't here. And these beautiful flowers. I hear the voice of the great granddaughter saying, Keep the oil on the ground. Our modern farming methods produce a lot of food, but it's also destroying the land. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter say, Keep the oil in the ground. Keep it on the land like the water. We're gonna cool this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter 
Pretty much it. Let's go back up. Join us. We're here at the uh, Civic Center Farmers Market, which is a great place for getting a message out about the climate change and climate crisis, extinction. Uh, yeah, for more information, uh, go to www.rebellion.earth. E A R T H. hoping to get a couple more, but <laughs> right, we'll burn up some more oil. This crazy consumption cycle that we live in. Consume, consume, consume. Bye, bye, bye. Consume, consume, consume. You need more, you need more. And you really don't. Usually you have too much. You know, Americans were, were the biggest wasters of things. So we don't conserve things very well, and we just haven't been very good stewards, or else we wouldn't be in this climate crisis that we're in. Yeah. Right. Let's make a big circle like
people would you say that is? I guess about 50, maybe 75. Not enough. There's never enough people ever. I wonder why Americans are so
I phrase. Uh, we're in San Francisco, Fulton, between Larkin, and geez, no, I the name of Larkin and Street. Anyway, it's Larkin and Fulton. We're by the main public library. We had just uh, walked around the uh, UN Plaza Farmer's Market. 
How are you doing there, Mikey? This is extension rebellion. And we're nearing the end of this protest. We've been out here for a good two hours. Talking to people about climate crisis and climate change. We are rising like flowers at the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers out the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like where we are rising to be street. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like where we are rising to be street. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like where we are rising to be street. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the street. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the street. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the street. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers out of the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers from the concrete. We are rising like warriors into the streets. We are rising like flowers from the concrete. We are rising like warriors.
We are members of Extinction Rebellion SF Bay Area. We are here in solidarity with Extinction Rebellion, a global movement, which is holding two weeks of nonviolent civil disobedience currently all around the world. Our demands are for governments around the world, the California state government and the US government, to tell the truth about climate change, to reduce carbon output to net zero by 2025, to convene a citizens or people's assembly made up of everyday people like us and you who are watching to guide the process of transition from our current unsustainable extractive economy to a regenerative, more just economy, green economy. And our final demand in the US is that this be a just transition which honors the voices and prioritizes the needs of frontline communities and historically marginalized communities. And so at this point, we invite any of those who have participated in this action to come to the front and say your personal reason, your personal stake, why you participated in this action today. When I was a small girl, my parents used to take road trips, great road trips, when I was a small child. We, when I was a small child, we took road trips. And one of the things that happened was every few miles, you had to stop at a gas station and wipe all the insects off of the windshield. There were so many insects in the world that you couldn't drive very far without cleaning the windshield. And I realized about 10 years ago, I haven't seen one insect on, on a windshield. They're gone. And that's one of the, that's a small indicator of why I'm here. It's just one tiny piece. Wow. I not thought about that. It's true. Insects are disappearing like great Hi, I'm Sadie. I'm 17 years old. And I wake up every morning in fear. I wake up scared that that I won't be able to see the next morning, that I won't be able to have kids, that I won't know what my future looks like, if I'll have one. I I wake up every morning in fear because because I don't know what's next, because it feels like there's no sense of urgency to a very urgent issue. Um, but within that fear, there's also a glimmer of hope that that change will happen with with the work of many and that actions will be taken to stop and to slow climate change and global warming but it's it's times like these that i remember that 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 hope is um is in other people's hearts as well thank you thank you yeah. hi i'm linda I'm I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. I've seen better days. I want the best and the brightest to hear us. If you're the best and the brightest, why do you keep getting it wrong? You're not immune from this unfolding disaster, this machine that is driving us all over a cliff. The only thing we can do now to get your attention is, as Mario Sabo said, throw our bodies on the gears of the machine and make it stop. Yeah. Woo -hoo! yeah. Woo -hoo! Mario Savio. Hi folks, my name's John. I'm originally from, uh, from England. I live here now. And I, I've got a photo of my granddaughter whose name's Ariana. Uh, would you say hello, Ariana? Hello, hello Ariana. <laughs> Because she's not even in school yet. She's not even in school. And I, I'm here because I want my granddaughter and her daughters to have the choices and opportunities that are available to us. Which requires us to wake up, rethink, 
and move together into a completely different way of relating with each other and with the, the beautiful bounty of Pachamama that feeds us every day. And so I'm working for that change in consciousness that will allow us all to have a, a future and give a future to this beautiful little girl and all others like her. Thank you. Hi there, everyone. My name is Casper. Um, I'm also from the UK. I'm a PhD student, and I, my PhD is in climate change. I've spent the last three years in a very privileged position, been able to research this. But it's not until moving out to California a year ago that I actually saw this in sort of real life. The forest fires that affected areas just north of, of Davis, where I study, um, devastating impacts for the people who live there. And I know from the, from the science and the scientists doing this that this, this is the kind of incident that's going to happen more and more commonly. Uh, across the US and across the world, and it's the people who are in the poorest and least powerful positions who are being impacted by these, these forest fires. I actually met my first ever climate change refugee when I was traveling in Oregon, and it was a family who'd been pushed out of California. They lost their home in the fires, and they couldn't afford to live in the state. They had to move to a new state where they didn't have family and friends, and three years of research doesn't really prepare you for meeting someone who's actually got a real story like that. And that's in a, in a rich, developed country, and we don't actually know that the stories of the people around the world, to poorer countries, far less resources, these kind of things are going to happen more and more commonly. This is why it's worth us taking time out of our schedules, out of our days, stopping our research, then coming down here and, and protesting and making this action heard, because this is a cause that's worth fighting for. Thank you. I'm here because I want to show solidarity with the frontline communities that are most affected by the climate crisis. I used to be very selfish and think about my own future and my unborn children's future, but then I realized that people are already suffering, especially frontline communities, the global south, even though they're not as responsible for this crisis as the global north, and then realizing that why we're here, everything that got us here, everything that's wrong with the world is connected. It's because of colonialism, capitalism, racism, resource ex extraction, genocidal indifference. And all I want to do is to stand in solidarity with everyone that's fighting the just fight and use my privilege and understand that I have it and just keep fighting. And it's also important to remember that we're not trying to save a system because this system has never worked. So we need to turn it around and I hope we can make it a just transition. Yeah. Can, can I say something? My name's Vanessa and I work uh, my day job is working on divesting our two big pension funds from right. fossil fuels. Yeah. Woo! But I'm here at my lunch hour because this feeds my soul. So I thank every single one of you for being here and for giving me this opportunity, and particularly to the organizers of this, because I know how hard it is to organize people, and y'all are blessed, so thank you. And thank you to everyone who has come out and thank you especially to the videographers and the people who are going to be editing this video part of the reason i'm here is that i saw the videos that have been coming in from around the world and i just wanted to stand in solidarity with everybody from every continent who's participating in this global movement thank you hi everybody i'm facebook living this by the way it's the new news, right? <laughs> um, I'm here because I've been working as a citizen activist for many years, going into council meetings, uh, trying to apply. I've run for office. I've tried to apply for committees. And um, basically, well, I say my name is Bridget of the Bridge because my superpowers are uh, building bridges and tearing down walls, <laughs> right? And not just wall, Donald Trump's wall, but the wall between you and I and the wall between us and our money, essentially. And so what I see every week, without fail, is hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars of tax money, money that we put into this pot 
and they're using it for just more destruction, more bullshit, more concrete, more tearing down and building up for no fucking reason. You know what I mean? It's just a fucking crisis of our politics. They have lost their freaking minds, right? So I'm here to try to raise that issue among the rebels of the Extinction Rebellion here in the United States. Our politics needs to be, we need to turn it over. We need to run for office and we need to vote for people that are ordinary people running for office. We need to take these spots of power. We need to be able to spend this money for the transition that we know we need to make, right? Not for more fucking bullshit. It's ridiculous. Anyway, sorry for my language. Yeah. Vote for Bridget. <laughs> My name is Susan, and I came out today because I've cared about this issue for a long time, and I've showed up at various other things, but this, I feel like this is sort of the start of, like, where's my every Friday, right? Like, I, I have to stop living normal life, and we all have to stop living normal life, and yeah. it's a little hard to do that because it's hard enough to live normal life as it is usually to get through everything you need to do for every day that has to happen. and. That's what I'm here for today. It's like this is the beginning of every week somehow. Or and and I guess the other thing I will say is that I was part of an anti-war movement against the Vietnam War when I was a teenager, and I was part of it when it was small, and I watched it grow big. And I know it can be done. And uh, so I'm I'm wanting to be part of that the the beginnings of things that are that are more a part of our everyday life that we're trying to stop this machine. If there are two or three more people, perhaps two or three more people. Very quickly, Barbara Ryan here. I'm on the steering committee of A Thousand Grandmothers for Future Generations. Wow. I just want you to know that we will always be here. We will always be here. We will always be here for the young people and to help with this struggle. And we are in great admiration of all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yay. All right, we're gonna hear from more than two or three more people. Here we go. Hi, I'll be speaking. very brief. My name's Geraldine. I, um, every week I volunteer at a wildlife rehab center where we are treating young uh, baby seabirds that are dying because they can't, don't, can't dive deep enough anymore. The ocean water in the bay especially is getting too warm and they can't dive deep enough to get the small fish that they're trying to eat and they're dying and coming in and we can't save them all. And it's us that are doing this to all wildlife. I just don't want us to forget. It's not just us, it's every form of life. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name's Jackson. I'll keep it brief, but I'm here because you are all here and we are the ones that are going to make